Hi, my name is Ted with Legacy Brand Leather. This video is in partnership with Tandy Leather. Tandy reached out to me and asked if I had anything I wanted to craft and share with you all. I've been wanting to craft a satchel messenger bag for some time now, so this seemed like the perfect opportunity. They sent the leather and the hardware I would need so I could set off to crafting. I'm going to show you how to build this satchel, and if you want to follow along, there's a free pattern available and a step-by-step -step tutorial. We've got a lot ahead of us, so let's get to it. Okay, once you've cut out all your templates, you're going to roll out your leather. Tandy sent me a stone oiled green leather that's going to work perfectly for this bag. Then you're going to take a straight edge and start cutting your leather so you have a nice clean edge because we're going to start cutting some straps. Using a strap cutter, cut four one inch wide straps. Once your straps are cut, lay out all the templates on the leather and begin tracing them all out. And just a note, we're keeping these side panels longer so we can cut them down later. I then like to use some shears to cut out the rough shape before I start going in with a more fine cut of the edges. Using a rotary knife and a straight edge, I'm just cutting some clean edges on all the templates I've traced out. Using a utility knife, I'm just going to be cutting out all the traced round corners on all the pieces. Here I'm just showing how I skive the leather. I'll mark about a half an inch from the edge and I'm using a round knife going at a little bit of an angle so I can get underneath there without going directly through the leather. Taking my time because this is a very sharp knife and just scoring it so that I can just take off maybe about half of the leather is what we're shooting for here. We're going to be skiving down the bottoms of the side panel pieces so that we can stitch them easier later. Here I'm using a detail rougher so that the glue, I'm using an eco weld water-based glue so that it can adhere to the leather as we're gonna be gluing it up. Once both pieces are tacky, we're gonna be pressing them together so that the glue can set. Using a wing divider, I'm marking a quarter of an inch where I'm gonna be putting my stitches. Using your preferred pricking irons, this is where you're going to be hammering out your stitching holes. Then it's just a matter of stitching it up using a saddle stitch technique. Now I decided to add another stitch that would add as support since this is the bottom of the bag and might be carrying a bit of weight. Since we have a lot of ground to cover, I'm just giving you a heads up. Any exposed edge is going to be burnished with some gum tragacanth, whether it's the handle, a securing tag, or any of the pockets. And then I'm using the template to mark out all the holes on the front panel and where the front pocket is going to go. Then I'm using a wing divider to mark out the stitching line that's going to be a quarter of an inch from the edge and a surface detail rougher so that the glue will adhere to both the pocket and to the front panel. Once that's glued and tacky, you're just going to put those two pieces together. For something like this, I will often add a little bit of weight. I'm using the granite slab on top of that to ensure that the pocket actually adheres to the front panel. Once that is dried up nicely, you're just gonna go and hammer in your stitching holes and get ahead to stitching. I'm gonna use this sewing time to talk a little bit about Tandy. Tandy leather has been around since 1919 and has influenced hundreds of thousands of leather crafters worldwide. I started going to my local Tandy leather store about seven years ago when I was starting my leather craft journey. If you're interested in starting leather crafting, Tandy has a wide selection of leather, dyes, tools, hardware, machines, classes, literature, and knowledgeable staff. Head to their website, tandyleather.com, so you can get inspired. And now back to the crafting. And now that that's done being stitched, we're going to clip the end of the thread and use a lighter to burn the ends. And here I'm just hammering the hole for where the buckle is going to sit on the front panel of the bag. 
There's the buckle tag, the buckle itself, and a double cap rivet being pressed together on the red press. The double cap rivet goes through the front panel into the buckle tag and then the cap goes on top and then it's pressed together with my red press here. That's how it looks on the front. Next up, you use your wing divider on the back of the top flap, which is going to lay on the back panel and you're gonna hammer through the back panel where it's supposed to sit. We'll save that for later. And now we're gonna focus on the interior divider. Here I'm just using a surface rougher to rough out where the actual pocket is gonna sit on the piece, then adding some glue to that and to the piece of the pocket itself before tacking it in place. And once that's dry, add your stitching line with the wing divider, put in some holes and start stitching that up. And here I'm just marking the stitching line for where the pen slots are gonna go on this interior divider piece, using an awl to make that mark. From there, I'm just gonna hammer the holes for that and then give it the old stitcheroo. And here I'm marking a half inch on the interior divider piece and the back panel piece because we're going to be skiving that down to roughly half the thickness so when this is layered up it's not going to be as difficult when we're stitching this whole bag together. Now just add your glue to the interior divider and the back panel and glue that up. Next up, we're adding our wing divider stitch line to the interior of the front panel and the back panel. This will make a little bit more sense a little bit later on. And now I'm using some Tanner's Bond adhesive tape to add to the edge here. It's gonna help keep the bag together a little bit with some small strips in the corners since it's a little difficult to have that tape make that turn before you just tape up the rest. Once that's all taped up, put the side panel piece in the center of the front panel and start clipping it together. I like using some small binder clips. This makes it easier as you're going around this corner here to use a small binder clip since it's kind of tricky. Just gotta pinch it in place and then use the small binder clip to make sure that that actually holds it together as you're gonna be stitching it. Once all the binder clips are in place, I will then take a few of them off remove the adhesive backing to expose the adhesive to the other piece and then start clipping it back together to make sure that everything stays in place from then on. And then I'll use my awl to just pull off the adhesive backing to expose the adhesive and then clip it together. It's a little bit simpler that way. Then moving on to the rest of the piece, pulling off the binder clips, exposing the adhesive and then clipping together. And here's a little close up, pulling off the adhesive in the corner before putting in the clips. It's a little tedious, but it will make it so much easier if you're doing it this way. And then just finish off the rest of the adhesive and the clips. When I'm hammering the holes for this sort of thing, uh, it's a little difficult because you have to make sure the edge isn't laying over another piece of leather. So. Uh, I'm removing some of the binder clips and hammering through to the punch pad and then once that's hammered through I replace the binder clip to make sure that the edges stay together for when we're going to be stitching this whole thing back up. Then it's just a matter of stitching up the whole piece. This is a little bit tedious but uh, you kind of get in the zone and take your time, remove the binder clips, stitch up the next couple holes, remove the binder clips, and do that until you're finished.
And then when you're done, just clip the thread, burn off the end so it doesn't pull through, and it should look something like this. Next up, you're going to add your adhesive tape to the back panel. And here I'm just measuring so that the distance is the same on the side panel pieces for the back and the front. And then clip it up. From here, it's just the same process. Remove the backing on the adhesive tape and then clip it back together, making sure the edges are in contact and flush. And then just clip it all back up. And then same as before, we're just gonna hammer through on that stitch line we made earlier, through to the punch pad. Hammer and then reapply the actual binder clips to make sure that uh, the whole thing stays together. And instead of using the pricking iron like I have been, on the corners I'm using a hand sewing punch to just punch the holes that I've marked. And otherwise you could use a sewing awl and just push that all the way through but I find that the hand sewing punch is a little bit easier. And then just finish hammering your holes and get ready to start stitching the rest of this thing up. Once the whole piece is stitched up, it should look something like this. And now you're gonna test your forearm strength by flipping this thing inside out. This is one of the most fun and difficult parts of this entire process. Now with some advice from some other leather crafting friends, I made the side panels a little bit longer so that once it's stitched up, all you have to do is trim it down. So there I'm just marking out the side flap and then just cutting it. If you want it shorter or higher, that's up to you. And now I'm just tracing the holes onto the top flap where the securing tags are gonna go. Then hammering out the holes and then using some double cap rivets to set those in place. Now moving on to the handle for the bag, I'm just tracing the lines where it's gonna be folded, and then the folds around the D-ring. Here I'm cutting a 3 quarter inch wide buffer layer that's gonna go and help bolster this whole handle a little bit more. Marking where that's gonna sit, adding some glue, putting that in place, and then gluing up the bits that are gonna go around the D-ring. Adding some weight to that so it sets. Here I'm marking the stitch line, but I wanted to add another buffer piece, so you can see the holes there, but I'm gonna be hammering through that again. So here's the other layer that's going to go on top of all those pieces, and then I'm gonna hammer through that. And then it's a matter of just stitching it up. Once that's all stitched up, I'm going to be using my wing divider to add an eighth inch stitching distance from each side before hammering some holes into that and stitching that up. And here I'm just double checking the distance for the top securing tags that's going to hold the handle before adding the holes to that. And then using some double cap rivets to set those in place. And here I'm using my rivet setter to set those rivets. 
before moving on to the straps. I'm adding the uh, tip of the strap there, and then I'm putting the holes in the back of the strap so that can secure to the back of the uh, entire bag. There I'm using some adhesive tape to secure those in place before I start stitching that together. And then I'm using some of that Tanner's Bond adhesive tape to the inside of the top flap. I'm gonna try to adhere that to the back piece of the bag and then making sure that the holes line up correctly before I start stitching this thing together. The adhesive will kind of come off a little bit as you're working on this, but it should hold it together enough to make sure you can get that stitched together. And once that's all stitched up, I'm going to be putting the holes in the front straps. Where the belt buckle lines up, I'm making the main hole and then adding a couple other holes to flank that, making sure you can adjust it as necessary. And moving on to the shoulder strap, I'm just tracing lines in where the actual strap is going to feed through. Using my rotary punch to punch some holes and then a knife to cut the distance in between. Do that for the remaining ones. And then here I'm using my wing divider to mark the quarter inch stitching distance before gluing that whole thing together. And then once that's set, we're going to be hammering the holes through and stitching that up. And then once that's stitched up, go ahead and give a sand and a bevel and a burnish. Kind of difficult to see here, but I'm adding a one inch wide oblong hole punch so that the uh, side piece D-ring support can fit through that and then a hole below that for the double cap rivet to fit in. It'll make sense in a second. Once you feed that through, that's where you're going to put the double cap rivet and then you're going to stitch the shield to the side panel if that makes sense. This is going to reduce the stress on that particular piece so that if you were just to attach it to the side of the bag it might rip out over time or get loose over time, but this is going to bring some strength to it. And there I'm using the surface rougher to make sure that the glue can adhere to something before adding the glue and the glue to the shield. And I'll press that together to make sure that it adheres. Wait a little bit. Then I'm going to use my awl to push the holes through and then I can start stitching it. and then repeat the process for the other side of the bag. All right, we are in the final stages. I'm just adding the tip to one of the straps here before putting a hole in it around one of the uh, swivel trigger snaps. And then a double cap rivet to set that in place. And on the other strap end, that'll help. Here's that oblong punch. I'm going to punch for the buckle for the, adjusting the strap if you want to adjust it. And there I am putting another belt tip end before adding a double cap rivet to the buckle. And the last uh, belt tip end that's going to feed through the shoulder strap. Here I'm using a one inch distance for the holes so that I can adjust it a little bit as necessary for using my rotary uh, punch there, and that's it. But let's check out some B-roll. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. I am on Instagram at Legacy Brand Leather. Go ahead and give me a follow there. I post daily. Head to my website, LegacyBrandLeather.com to check out my shop. If you like this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing. That shows me that you want to see more videos and more content like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week with a new video. Stay safe out there.